instead of taking that tunnel, I take that bridge any day. I, I, it's always, it was always clear for me. So now, now, now it's backed up a lot, right? Like time-wise, 30, 40 minutes. What about, what about rush hour? Rush hour is terrible. In that one fifteen, almost one thirty, yes, yeah, so we're in there on a Tuesday. Well, actually, Monday night because it happened Tuesday morning. Yeah. So, okay. So what did you hear? Oh, I was, my room's actually right here, and I was uh, laying in bed watching TV, and it felt like a plane going, I guess, above the roof. Like if you were getting buzzed. Yeah, and it made a, a noise. It was shook, and then all of a sudden I heard a boom. And I come to my sliding windows, look, I thought that a plane might have crashed under the water. Nothing. And then I lived next to the port. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I the thought, right here. Yeah, and I thought I heard, like, maybe containers might have fell off. Yeah. And then my daughter and grandson came running in both directions saying, Dad, Pop, I'm like, what's going on, man? And they're like, the bridge is gone. This is right here, because we've already seen a ton of them. There are about like eight or nine of these, okay? So look at these. Look at these trucks full with imported cars, Mitsubishis, right? That, I mean, I've already seen just three, three car full of Mitsubishi motors. Um, let me talk to Andy and Derek, cause they're, they're here. Okay. Guys, this is Derek from the food boat, buddy of mine's. And, How doing? okay, Andy, did you see that truck just pass by with full of what? That, that was a car, that was, those were vehicles that are being transported out of the port. The, all those vehicles had to be brought in. They'd be staged and be, be uh, cataloged and ready to load on ships to different ports for distribution uh, across the, the, the nation to your local car dealer. Yeah. All those vehicles now got to be moved to another port. The logistics of this thing are amazing when you consider how many moving pieces and parts are involved now i think this is this is probably the best perspective and closest shot that we can get um uh what do you think derek you think uh, it doesn't get any i uh, mean you, i other than being on the water and violating the uh the safety zone yeah, yeah this is about as close as you can get I, i'm sure look oh Hey guys, Alfred Montaner here, and I am in Baltimore. I am actually in the site uh, a ways away. Uh, right now you're not gonna see it because I'm not zoomed in, but I'll, I'll put a closer vid video so you guys can see of the Dolly, which is a cargo ship that went ahead and cra crashed into the Francis Scott Key Bridge here in Baltimore, Maryland. So I'm here with Andy Jones from the Menorcan Mullet, the Menorcan Navy, you guys know him, he's a buddy of mine, and Derek from the food boat and we're documenting everything that's been happening in this area. It's, it's going to be hard to translate what we're seeing. I'm going to do my best to show you guys, but this is massive. When I tell you guys how much bridge is gone and the amount of work that's going to have to happen here is crazy. It's blowing about 30 winds, 30 knots. There's white caps here in, uh, in this area and uh, we're gonna go ahead and document this I'm gonna go ahead and go around I don't know let's see where this video takes us I, I absolutely at this point have no idea what's gonna happen next I do want to talk to Andy because he uh, if you haven't seen what Andy does Andy uh, documented the Golden Ray which was uh, a cargo ship accident in St. Simon Sound Georgia which I actually went with him on his boat when that happened so this is kind of like a flashback for me, completely different scenario. That port of Baltimore is completely closed right now. Lives are affected. People's transit times are, 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 are decimated 30, 40 minutes compared to just crossing over the bridge. They're saying that the bridge is gonna take three to seven years to, to, to make again. They're not even worried about it. There's still people they have not found at this point. So keep those people in our prayers. Let's go ahead and document what we see here. So before I meet up with Andy and Derek, I wanna see if I could, I know that there's boats, I thought I would see them today guys, but there's, there's no boats here as well. 
All right, so this is a local boat ramp here. All right, this this will this will lead this will lead to the actual to the actual uh, dolly. Obviously, we would have to take a boat ride. Oh man! No wonder why you guys are not watching my channel as much as I thought. I think you should. You guys are still snowed in. There's not one boat here. One trailer, nothing. That's so wild. Look at the groove. This is this is like a real, real boat ram, guys. You guys uh, in the Maryland area, tell me if uh, you guys have seen some bloop, bloop, bloops out here. Oh man. So, guys, we're here with Andy. Andy Jones from the Menorcan Mullet. This, this, I was just telling him, I just did the intro. This is giving me flashbacks of the Golden Ray, something so massive, completely different. Complete, completely, 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 completely different. different. And no doubt, um, it, it's, it does bring back a lot of, a lot of images in, in my mind from, oh, from what happened in, in Georgia. It's but crazy. this is such a massive scale. Uh, to look and see this thing going on uh, right here behind us as this process uh, is unfolding of trying to open open the open the port up back here what a, what an incredible monumental task is so there's there's a lot of things i mean there's a lot of things happening right now you just got messages from somebody that's actually moving stuff that was in the port on the way to get loaded up to leave the port on ships before this problem happened right and, and, and now what do they have to do and all that all the all the equipment he specializes as frontier, frontier specialized uh, transport. He's another YouTuber. Creator. Yeah. He sent sent me some photos. He's they're over there uh, moving some of the, the the big. A lot of these ships move cars mm -hmm. and, and 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 boxes of things. Um, but uh, like on the car carriers, roll on, roll off. Anything that rolls, they're able to put that on there. And some of that stuff is like bulldozers, excavators. Yeah. And what he had on his trailer, these massive earth moving. Bulldozers. John Deere, I just saw it. I huge, mean, huge, huge equipment. All that caterpillar. All, all that. Uh, th those vehicles that were staged to come out of the port have to be moved, and they have to go to another port where they can be transported. Where are some of the other ports that they're going to? Have, well, they, have they said some well, of them already? Uh, there's like seven, seven ports that handle roll on, roll off. Maybe nine. Roll on. Brunswick roll off. is one, which is Brunswick. your home, home, home area. In Brunswick, Brunswick is is now the number one port. Baltimore was number one. Yeah. Brunswick was number two. Guys, there's 30 mile an hour winds right here, so if it were a little windy, that's what it is. But it's it's blowing hard but here. New York, Charleston, Jacksonville. Um, uh, uh, there's a port in Jersey. Um, I can't recall them all. I got so, so much going so on there, in my there, mind, but there, there, there are other places, and this stuff, this stuff is going to be have to be transported to those locations that can ex understand us, that can accept that cargo. Just because it's the closest port, they may not be able to accept, accept that cargo. It may have to be transported way down the coast to find its way onto a ship to make Let, it to its ultimate destination. Andy, let's give them a rundown of where we're at right now. Because at this moment, while we're here, you've been documenting the whole process. I, I'm going to do exactly what I did last time. I'm going to follow everything you've done from the beginning to the end. Because you're not here physically when you're, you're, you're doing the day-to-day. -day, but you're here now. I am. So where are we at now from the day that the collapse happened to now? Where are we now? Well, right now, they're in the process of trying to remove the obstructions that are that are in the main section of the channel. That area that's been designated for ships to come through. Uh, that's That area is specifically dredged for the depth required for the ships. And in order for them to resume the shipping, they've got to get that cleared. Keep in mind, there's now a 980 plus foot ship that's blocking part of that with part of this debris on it. So it's a it's a process that the engineers have to yeah. be involved in, divers have to be involved oh, in. Oh, it's cold. Sonar boats have divers to be involved in with. Cold. It's, isn't the isn't the hole? You can't touching, see in the water. Isn't it touching the bottom of the of, of the ground? It is. It's ground. It's grounded, it's grounded in the area up there, and they may end up having to remove some of that cargo that's make on it lighter that ship to lighten it. Yeah. Don't keep in mind, there's still hazards. That thing has an incredible amount of fuel on it. That is, it's 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 thick. That heavy fuel oil that's on that ship is is heavy. It could 
very well, easily cause well, an environmental and, catastrophe. And, and, if and one of the reasons why we wanted to come here for a second, I wanted to show this pretty area because we've been filming from up top, right? Because that's where we're supposed to be. And we're, we, we wanted to show this at least so you guys can see to get that visual representation of how, how. This is a beautiful it's, area. It's a beautiful this is, area. This is a like beautiful area. And that's something that you certainly, and Alfred. Something happens. Which, it's where, all coming right here. Wind blowing from? It's coming right here. If something was to happen, something's going to happen. It's going to come right here to to this beach. Right. And so, so we're hoping concern. that nothing nothing happens on that level, right? I think we already seen the community has been affected uh, in, incredibly because I was just just talking to somebody at the local hotel where I'm staying, and they're like, "Yeah, I have to go around now. I can't go. That's I have to go around whole the whole city. Area yeah. is going to be impacted." Whether you're involved in a port as an employee or something, yeah. if, if you just live here, now you've, you're, you've, you're, not only that, this artery, this major artery has now been severed. So the traffic that normally would have used this artery yeah. to get to other areas to into the city or north of the city, now they're, go, they're, they're now constricted into those already congested mm -hmm. tunnel and, 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 and uh, bridges that are over there. Those, those, those uh, that that infrastructure is going to have to absorb yeah. the traffic that would would normally come out of here. So so Andy, explain to me and explain to them who's involved, right? You, we have Unified Command. Explain what that is so that they understand, right? I want I want people to get an understanding of All the right. depth of this, right? Because the, the news is not going to say certain things like we're saying it. In the Incident Command System, the ICS system, uh, Unified Command is is a system where they they take the major players, uh, Coast Guard, uh, U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, the Maryland Department of Transportation, there's going to be uh, uh, the Maryland Department of Environmental Health. Um, there's a there's a list of them. I'm trying to think of, of, of and all there's so people. many people behind the scenes Don as well. John, the the, the salvage company that's yeah. salvaging the bridge, and um, the company that is out here, Resolve, that's going to be responsible. There's two different salvage operations working on the channel right now. And that is Don John and Resolve. Resolve is, is contracted to take care of the ship. Don John is taking care of the bridge. But you've got bridge on top of a ship. So those those two uh, salvage uh, groups, they're salvage masters, they're, they're engineers. All those guys have to coordinate, work together to get this thing done. The, I think, I, Alfred, I, I really think that in human history, this is going to come down. This event is going to come down into one of those that people are going to say, you know, we as a species rose up together yeah. because there was this massive problem and they worked together and they got it resolved in a very timely manner. This is going to be, this is, this is so, a huge event. So speaking of some of the people on Unified Command, um, I, I heard on the news and on your channel, right? The Army Corps of Engineers ended up opening up a section which allows the tugboats and barges to start Are critical yes critical huge because at least there's 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 a tiny vein of blood going through the port now well more importantly than that alfred i want you to think about this mm -hmm. if you're one of these two salvage groups that's out here trying to open this channel and you can only work from one side of the bridge yeah that's a that, that that's a big that is a big handicap yes for you. yes now you're going to be able to get your equipment on both sides of the, yes. of, of the bridge and be able to attack the problem. Well, recently I was actually doing uh, an informal video on in the Palm Beach Boat Show. And I got on a barge that had a crane and they were removing all the pilings. And I understood, I was like, wow, if you have the right equipment, these guys know what to do. They're the best of the best. Yeah. You take a look at, at incredible and I saw stuff. I saw your video. It was incredible. And the coordination in between those incredible. crews to incredible. make that happen. Now take that and multiply it on a scale like this and imagine the coordination and stuff that's got to take yeah. place with those groups all skilled all sk all really skilled people yeah and 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 the navy's out here and the and the american spirit that's what i was going to say the american spirit's out here and we're going to get this fixed like we fix many other things that have been tough and worse in our history as 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 americans right yep. so i'm excited i i want them to go ahead and and continue watching your series I'm going to take them around. I want to show them a little bit uh, different than what they're seeing, right? Because I want to make I want to make it a video that people see and understand the area and the people, all the things that are involved. Because I could imagine that 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 road that leads to that bridge is probably a mile, two miles closed off. So now maybe you have to get in a certain way. I want to I well, want to get deeper into this. I will say this: my time with the Golden Ray. Most of my video, most of my equipment is geared for being used 
on my boat. Yeah. And I was able to get a lot of a lot of good informative uh, video and images mm -hmm. that we were able to discuss and look at and kind of explain as the process unfold with, with that ship incident in, down in Brunswick. The plan is to get the boat up here. Yeah. So I'm back. I'm really back in my element. So you want to come back and get on the water and show them. And I'll be able uh, the, the safety would... zone right now for for a marine interest is 2,000 yards. So basically. Um, we're four miles out right now, guys. Four miles we, we, out. we have a zoom that you can see what you're seeing, right? Because because right now I, I wanted to this perspective to so that you guys can see this perspective that, that this is literally like, like there's there's a dad and his daughter right here. This is like an everyday thing for them, right? right. It's it's a weekend right now. People are are gonna come and enjoy the the area. Now, technically. There's a there's a fort right next to the actual bridge, right? That, that's a park itself that's closed yeah. now. And I don't know if, if if you guys if you guys are able to see right 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 across over here, that is the Fort Almistead area, right over there. And you can actually see some vessels if you come down the uh, what's what's left of the existing span area, and it starts to slope down the first little bit of. Uh, Tree, tree line that you see there, that's okay. Fort Almistead. Okay. That has been commandeered by the first responders. And that is, they got a boat ramp, they've got uh, docks, so they got so facilities over there. We got spring that just finished, right? We're getting closer to summer. It's actually cold right now over here, um, but it's gonna warm up quick. It's yeah. gonna, in a couple days, it's gonna be in the 70s again. People are gonna wanna be on the water, and now they have one less thing. So that's gonna be a, a, a huge problem because they're, they're gonna need some area to use to, to, to get the people that are necessary to go ahead and attack this huge issue. Yeah. I'll tell you, they they cannot absorb how massive that is, Andy. It's so when you, you see the, see the, the distance on screen, oh or no, close up, you say, the, oh the, look at the ship, the, the you angle, back off from it, and see it. Oh, it's it's nowhere close, guys. I'm telling you, like you literally have to walk right with a camera and say, I'm going to walk from here to all the way to the distance of what has been lost here and what they have to remove so people understand that like you can't grasp it until you're here physically seeing it so um yeah the, the, the visuals that you're seeing on the news is not the same and it's a big job but they will do it at piece by piece because once they get the main areas working and, and the port moving yeah. then then it, everything yeah, else yeah, just, just gets every, every, you know you can, uh, there's you there's take, take yeah. your breath and and move in move in through that with a with a, a, a different uh, a different attitude. Yes. Right now it's critical. And I yes. want you, everybody, and I want people on your channel to understand this. That's that's a that's the site of a tragedy. There are still, still there's people still people that there's, haven't there's found. still people that, that they didn't bring home. Yeah, they haven't found, now. yeah. And I can promise you that everyone that's up there associated with that program has that in the back of their mind. Yeah. They're trying to get those people home. Of course, and didn't they find one? They did yesterday. They did, they did. Yeah. So, so they brought somebody home. and. And, and, and as people that we've been on the water and we've seen a lot of things good and bad happen on the water, the sea is not so forgiving, it right? It is not, it is so, cruel. So it we, cruel. We, we know that. So let's hope and pray that they actually find the people who are still there so they can take them to their loved ones. And uh, I wanna thank you, Andy, for, for, for not inviting me, but for, for letting me surprise you. It was, a, I, it was a very good surprise. Because I came and I wanted to support Andy because he was here doing his live stream with Derek and uh, it was a, a, my way of saying, hey, listen, I want to support you. Get the live streams going. We're going to be here. He's going to be filming on his channel. Andy Jones from the Menorcan Mullet. Follow him. I'm going to go around. I'm going to see some more stuff, and we're going to get going on this video. This is crazy. I'm, I'm just a lucky guy, guys. Actually, you know what? I actually, I'll get that shot, but I wanna, I wanna, I wanna talk to you because you, you woke up. It woke you up. <laughs> I want you to tell me, hold on a second, guys. What's your name, Rob, right? Yeah. All right, uh, Rob, you mind if I, if I put you on camera? Yeah. No. All right, all right, guys. So it, it's actually, so first first and uh, foremost, thank you, Rob. Oh, no problem. Guys, so Rob was here Middle of the night? Yeah, that 1.15, almost 1.30, yes, so we're in there on a Tuesday. Well, actually, Monday night, because it happened Tuesday morning. Yeah. So, okay. So what did you hear? Oh, I was, my room's actually right here, and I was uh, laying in bed watching TV, and it felt like a plane 
going like this above the roof. Like if you were getting buzzed. Yeah, and it made a, a noise. It was shook, and then all of a sudden I heard a boom. And I come to my sliding windows, look, I thought that a plane might have crashed under the water. Nothing. And then I lived next to the port. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I the thought, right here. Yeah, and I thought I heard, like, maybe containers might have fell off. Yeah. And then my daughter and grandson came running in both directions saying, Dad, Pop, I'm like, what's going on, man? And they're like, the bridge is gone. And I'm like, nah. You know, wow. I'm like, I'm, I'm 61 years old. And uh, this thing was built when I was about 12, 13 years old. Yeah. You know, when I born Brent Dudlock, I was like, wow. this was a shock. I was mean, totally, and then the lights that are lost, and then the economic part of it all, and it's just, it's just amazing. So you would transit that bridge often to, to, um, to do stuff or, or not? Uh, well, actually, if I had appointments over the other side, yeah, because I haven't driven in a while. Yeah. But I actually worked on this side of the bridge, on the left-hand side when you go over. Mm -hmm. And if I was there, company closed up now, but if I was there, mm -hmm. if I was working the 4 to 12 shift, I would be caught in that. So when you figure 12 o'clock, I shower, I get my automobile, I start climbing up that rigor in that time. That, that I would have What's the first thing you notice? Okay, everything collapsed. What, what else did you notice? Did you hear anything else? Sirens, uh -oh. helicopters? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, during the, I say about maybe 10 minutes or that's after the boom. Yeah. You can see the, the lights uh, on this side of the bridge, this side of the bridge. You see, um, um, uh, I couldn't tell what type of boat they were, but they had like little lights on them. Yeah. You know, they were all around the water. Yeah, because you, you can't get through. If right. somebody wasn't uh, uh, going to navigate or just crossing mm -hmm. in, it, they would have they would have had a big problem. And then a few hours later, that's when the helicopter started. And then news crews, everybody came yeah, in this area. Yeah, like yeah. it's been crazy. And it's crazy up and down the street. People, to, uh, people down that end are charging money for people to go into your twenty five, thirty dollars. Really? Yeah. And then they, they, I guess they, I guess people are telling me either no or, or they were charged money, but they always come down to my hand and it's like, I'll let a few people come, but it's, it's oh. like every day. At e even Easter Sunday, they came bugging wow. to come in to want to see. Guys, um, obviously a, a couple of days have happened, right? Oh, yeah. It's already, it's already, it's starting to slow down. I mean, I, I came out here with a two, two buddies of mine from, from YouTube as well. They're, they're, right. they're two other channels. And, uh, you know, I think these are the stories, right? I want to tell, like, the people that are actually here are going to get affected. You're saying that we have a better shot if we go right here? Yeah, if you go on uh, the other side of the fence right here. Okay, guys. You let's put it right there. I mean, you can see everything. Let's go. Container ship, all Let, that. Let's, let's move that in there. I want, I want them to see this. Um, <laughs> it's, you know, I, when I left Miami, I didn't think I was going to be in a backyard. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, here and over that side. Too, oh my goodness, Rob, this is the best shot that I will tell you. Why? Here's the thing: why this is going to be the best shot? Because I've been trying to see the back of the ship the whole time, and I haven't been able to see it. Uh, they said there's a lot of damaged uh, cargo on there. The uh, some of them containers are damaged or leaking, but they're saying there ain't no environmental. <laughs> you can't trust the government. He, he, he's putting qu air quotes in the air, guys. Okay, so, 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 okay, so, so you're going to be basically seeing this on a daily, right? Mm-hmm. Any you're, kind of construction, rebuilding, whatever it might be. And uh, I think, honestly, like, this has easily been the the best shot. I mean... I've been going around the whole city talking to the locals, and I just came from Logan's Village Center. Okay. So people were on the side of the road there. We were at Fort uh, Smallwood Park. Fort Smallwood, yeah, right over here. Yes, we were there, and then we just went to the Amazon Fulfillment Center, um, and we were showing it there. Like, because uh, by the Amazon Fulfillment Center, they have like a, a good shot of the front, but this, this is, this is night and day. Um, yeah, we had uh, three news crews. We had uh, one from Boston, and one from uh, California, and then towards the end, WBAL local here, they stopped by. But most everybody, they, they were mostly down that end for some reason. But yeah. It's, what gets me is, if people would look at the original footage yeah. 
of the boat when it hit the bridge. Mm -hmm. It looked like the boat was coming this way. Yeah. And now you're seeing a boat, it's going that way. Mm -hmm. So that's puzzling me. If that would have been early in the morning, mid afternoon, or or even uh, evening, that could have been a lot more lives lost. Oh, listen, it it could have it could have been a lot worse. Mm -hmm. Um. So this is your grandson? Yeah, that's my grandson Aiden, it, and that's our dog Coco. A Aiden, did you hear it? You you want to be on YouTube, Aiden? Yeah. No, you're good. <laughs> All right. What what they call this area? Carnegie. Carnegie Flats. Carnegie Flats. And and guys, so, so you see how close he is to yeah, the port. the port, right? Mm -hmm, that's so, the so, so so the ship will probably eventually be unloaded from there after they make it lighter, right? Yeah. Well, you got uh, you got some ships here that can't go out. Yeah. Go to the bridge. You got them that can't come in, and yeah, they're going to be sending a barge or something to take some of them containers off, and then but you can see how unstable the ship is. Yeah, it's uh. They're saying that that metal part is somehow mangled or bended into the front of the ship. It is. Yeah, it's it's on the front of the ship. Um, and, but like I said, for me, it's it's pretty impressive to to show, like, how. See, I this this for me is one of the the best perspectives without being on a boat, right? Mm -hmm. And more importantly, I think for me and for my audience that's going to be watching this, you, you like you're directly affected by this, right? Like right. this, this is this is. The I community, mean, yeah. Yeah, everybody, all you guys. I've been now. You have people that have to transit this bridge, that are are going to have to go around, go through oh, the yeah, Baltimore tunnel, tunnel, the yeah, tunnel. And the, uh, um, Chris, uh, yeah, the two tunnels. Um, Key Bridge, yeah, Bridge got Key Tunnel and the uh, Harbor Tunnel. Well, um, the good thing about Americans is that we're resilient mm -hmm. and um, we'll get past this. We'll make it better. We'll learn from it. This to me is next to 9-11 is one of the biggest hits that I've experienced. I'll tell you, it, it's definitely going to be one of those scenarios where people say, where were you when this happened? Exactly. And um, I, I know. I li literally, I was just talking about that. I got I got a message from my buddy, actually, Andy Jones from the Menorca Mall at five in the morning. He's like, you gotta see this. I was like, what? So, you know, you start thinking all these crazy things. You, mm -hmm. you don't know what, what what's going on because... Right. And, and personally, I, I've been on tug... Uh, I have a tugboat series on my channel. Oh, wow. So I've actually been on smaller ones right. uh, on the Miami River showing how the tug captains maneuver those cargo ships through a very narrow river. So I know how capable those guys are and I will tell you I would encourage you to watch it and I would encourage them to watch it as well Okay, because it's very you see the best of the best and from what I've gathered and I don't know the story uh, As far as the tugs. I know the tugs usually help them in and out, right? But once they're free to go and they're on their own will the tugboats did their job right. and they just navigate You know to where they need to go in this case. There was a power outage. Right. They lost yeah. power and then that's how it became such an issue. I'll tell you, if the wind has been like the way it was, like it's been blowing 30, 30 miles an hour mm -hmm. recently. Like, uh, like you guys, I'm telling you a lot. It's been, and now what happens is you have no power, you have current and wind, big structure. How fast is it going to pull you in, or how can you even stop that? Yes. How are you going to stop that? And they're watching it. I mean, I, I don't know if you could have angled a little bit more better, but uh, that. that the angle he was on, I don't know, the way I looked at it, I think he could have maybe turned it just a little bit more and it might have, I don't know, it still would have come down or not, but at least the main uh, other structure is intact. But how good it is. Oh, well. Yeah, they got to sit engineers in you, for that. You, you yeah. know, listen, I'm sure that's a that's a big uh, and that's the least of the worries right now we still have oh yeah four died i think it is that's yeah. right there's still people that they have not found yeah so so the tragedy is are they going to because they said underneath of the water there's so much fragments and and the brick and the metal well, think think about it it's 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 asphalt mm -hmm. there's a lot going yes, on there right on top of them and who knows they may even got uh pushed under 
where the big ship is too. I just feel for the families, yeah. I really do. One of the guys, which I wasn't aware of until shortly after the fact, he's from my area, he is from Dundalk. Mm -hmm. And yeah, uh, she's the one who came running into my room, this is my daughter Robin. How you doing Robin? Hi, how are you? Nice to meet you, you Alfred. Too. You too. Alfred? Yes. Uh, nice to meet you, Alfred. So, so you heard it as well? Oh yeah. Uh. So you, you, you woke dad up and told him, hey, the bridge just fell? I was up. And that, that was like close to April Fools, right? So, 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 so this was like within the time of, 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 of April Fools, right? Like mm -hmm. we, April 1st in America, guys, is basically uh, uh, April Fools where, where we basically prank people. Yeah. I, I, I did a prank on a bunch of my friends, right? <laughs> so, yeah. so, um, so what did you hear when, when you heard it? Like when you heard it? I heard what I thought was thunder, but then I was like, nah, thunder don't, don't carry on that way. It don't ripple that way. I got up scared. Mm -hmm. I, I literally, I just jumped up, ran out of my room. And as soon as I ran out of my room, my oldest son ran right into me. We just gave that look like, you heard that, right? Kind of look. Yeah. And... Wow. Right then and there, we just we just walked out and we were just looking around at first. We we're trying to figure like is the factories going down, is something had to port. Yeah, yeah. You know, those kind of things. We looked at directly over here and we it didn't dawn on us that the bridge was down. It didn't mm. even. Oh, well, it's dark down. too. Yeah, but yeah. yeah. it's dark. You heard sirens, right? Well, you hear sirens. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, so, okay, okay, so so okay when you say you heard sirens because. They're obviously, they're shutting yeah. everything down, all the roads, so nobody goes through the bridge, because imagine, you know, at that point, there's no there's no barricades or nothing like that. Somebody just thinking, going along, all of a sudden, there's no bridge there, and you just fall off the bridge. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, so, so yeah, they had to, now, from, from what they were telling me is that their construction crew that was there, so most of the guys that they right. have not found, they usually have to have a police officer present when they're doing construction or work on the bridges or anything I, I see it all the time it could right. be the most minimal thing in in south florida that, where, where i'm from and they have a police officer there and those are the ones who called in and said hey we got to stop everything com from coming in here because there would have been more more people on the bridge which, which it made, oh, yeah. made it even more of a disaster they said that tractor chairman or the car behind it they just made it over i mean just <laughs> made it over and then you see the bridge go boom yeah and one what? of the guys actually worked on at Herman's Bakery, which is off of Mayor Boulevard yeah. and Hollywood, uh, Hollywood Avenue. Mm -hmm. and he works right there. He's the one the last one to cross over where it uh, collapsed. Excuse the way I look. Well, well <laughs> listen, um, I, um, I want to thank you guys. Guys, big shout out over oh, here. No problem. Uh, thank you, Rob. You're welcome. Uh, you, uh, you'll see it on my channel. And thank you so much. And you'll see it. Okay. So, okay. So, so, so if you type in, you type in. This is a series I do. Oh. This is this is the Chicho. The Chicho is kind of like funny, guys. Right? right. This is a whole different serious uh, thing on my channel. Let me let me adjust this real quick. But yes, um, let me get this here. These, so you guys. I don't know what these are. I don't know if these are affected or not. You got these extra boots over here. I've never seen them until today. Which ones? Straight ahead, right here. See that one right there? I don't know. If that's yeah, part of the going or not. Cause nobody can go through there yet. They, okay. open a, they open a narrow spot, they said, but I haven't seen much traffic going by. Okay, so so we've been seeing tugboats. We've been seeing a lot of tugboats um, when we were filming. We were filming from Fort Smallwood, which is that way. Right. Right. So so where we were, we were originally on Fort Smallwood, getting the shot from. The, the bow of the boat this this for me is is crazy so that's me there you go yeah we subscribe there you'll see the, the we video there you see uh cruise ship go by uh-huh we usually see the uh the uh ship going to the port going, going back out yeah. of the port and it's strange not seeing nothing isn't it wild yes it's, it's like your feet stand still awesome robin yes well guys I'm, I'm heading back to Miami. I'll tell you, uh, my days, I start and I'm like, where does it end? I don't know. I got you. <laughs> well, that was like uh, people from Boston. They, uh, they, they got permission from us at next door and they were on that bridge for like four days, yeah. rain and, and you name it. And they had to go back 
<laughs> well, listen, thank you guys so much for everything. I'm glad, I'm glad you guys weren't uh, affected. I mean, you guys are so close. You could be, you could have yes. been on that bridge. You could have had friends, family, you know, anything. All right. Well, um, I'm telling everybody on this side and other places to be effective is to look in front of your homes in case anything from the debris or whatever might come up. They want, yeah. they want to know about it. So I was just talking to some locals over here just now. They're telling me from the end, and I had to put the, uh, change the lens, but you guys saw the view. So there's people now that are losing 45 minutes to an hour in their time, and, and everybody is using the Port of Baltimore, the, the Baltimore Tunnel. And actually, I just went through that tunnel right now. It's a big tunnel. So right now, the, the thing who's, that's saving this neighborhood and this whole area is that tunnel because everybody has to use it. So I was just talking to somebody locally and they said, you know, if they came, if they came in at six uh, in the morning, now they have to wake up at like 3.45, four in the morning currently because what's happening is that the tunnel is getting backed up. It's Sunday right now when I'm filming. So it, it, it was obviously transited, but it wasn't backed up. I can see like on a Monday through Friday uh, in traffic hours, this thing must be an absolute nightmare. Um, the person said that they were tired because obviously it's disrupted, disrupted their sleep, you know, from what they had before. Because literally, if you live on the other side of the bridge or this side of the bridge, now you have to go around the whole city to go ahead and, and show that. So let me get going. I'm gonna get back here later, show a little bit of this, and yeah, maybe we can get some of those cranes working that we filmed over there at Fort Smallwood. I'm gonna grab a quick breakfast here. I got Derek and uh, Andy here. So, but these are some of the these are some of the companies and the restaurants and all that that are being affected by all this. You guys already had breakfast. Oh yeah. You're, you're done? We're done. So Andy guys, so you guys see what's going on. Andy's actually talking to some locals. You guys are from here. Yes. So I, I'm actually documenting with Andy like what the bridge collapse has done. How has it affected you guys? Like right now we're having, so, so, so how's that affected you? Are you working this area? No, but I, I'm from Baltimore. So okay. Instead of taking that tunnel, I'll take that bridge any day. I, I, you know, it's always, it was always clear for me. So now, now, now it's backed up a lot, right? Like time-wise, 30, 40 minutes. What about, what about rush hour? Rush hour is terrible. Right now, Sunday, you better get through it right now. This is your moment. Yeah, all right, guys. Well, that's, that's what we want to document. At least what I'm trying to tell is the story of how it's affecting all the local people here and we're having a big breakfast over here at Willie's so thank you so much for that guys all right um that's kind of the story and uh, let me get out of here Hercules fence oh dude oh my goodness this is it oh man this is it Okay, so we've been seeing some boats coming in and out of here. Oh man. Can we see it? Can we see it from this angle? No, cause it's, it's a round, hmm. There's the boats. All right, guys, well, listen up. Um, I'm trying to see what we can get uh, of value, right? I, I, th I think maybe that boat that we were seeing transporting people back and forth. We just went to one of the boat launches, which was back here somewhere, which was empty. Very, very interesting. There's a boat, guys. 
There's a boat. There's one boat. Um, I did drop my camera. I just things that happen, guys. Uh, my audio might be glitching because the three millimeter port looks like it got trashed. So forgive me if my audio is staticky. All right, that's the boat to steer. Now, this area here looks like a trail. Now, for what? I don't know. But the question is, where does it lead to? Let me open this lamp a little bit. These people must have heard everything in the middle of the night. And uh, yeah, it must have been wild. Let's see what the sign says. Let's see what the sign says. No swimming or skating. Dude, this almost looks like a small little beach, dude. It is a beach. What the? <laughs> How did I just find a beach here in Maryland, dude? All right, we can't swim here, guys. But we can probably keep on walking. Wow. You, the things that I ended up finding. Actually, I think it's better for me to go on that trail instead of walking on those wet rocks. All right, well. Obviously, it's a transited area, right? to ask these people questions here. They must have heard it all. So this area looks fenced off. So this might be as far as we can go, guys. Now the question is, okay, so when we were driving up here, we were driving, I believe through up this road, let's see if we see the markers. The marker should be on there. It looks like part of a boom. Ain't no joke. This is kind of sketchy, dude. A lot of noises. All right. So guys, the bridge is on the other side of this. Wow. And I'll show you guys here, so you guys can see that it... See, I, I mean, I'm, I'm assuming this area is blocked off. Man, it kind of sucks that my audio is a problem right now. 
you see here how the signs all right well it is oh that is open there this is open so this must have been I'm so confused This is it guys, this is to where it goes. And I'm assuming this whole area has been blocked off. All right. And realistically, to where we came in, I can technically, instead of going through there, I can walk through here and make a right. So this fence has been, okay, it makes sense now guys. All right, well, let me get back to the car. I'm gonna get some footage of, of, the, bar, of, of the cranes because I got a good shot and I can give that to Andy. Just how, I mean, I'm glad I did that because it shows you guys what the locals are dealing with, right? It's, it's, uh, there's a church right here and uh, it's Sunday. And there's people right now probably praying for this whole scenario to go away. It's called Mount Olive. All right, well, let, let, me, let me continue going. Wow, this is pretty, pretty awesome. This is, so, guys, I'm soaking up the moment, dude. This is, this is wild. But it, there's no data mini, transfer it's live. A, it's a mini you, uh, HDMI or mini? It's a mini SD card, uh, a micro SD card. So there's no plugs? The only plug in it is to supply power. It doesn't, it doesn't. So I originally thought I could take I could take my yellow that light, well that lightning plug that we use on the pad, you know, and run it in there and get an HDMI port off the screen or off this image. Uh, it does, but there's all the overlays. There's probably a way to clean that up. I've got a I've sent them an email to support the scene. It'd be nice to do. Alright, we're seeing some boat traffic uh, go through the area. Um, you know what it looks like? Um, kind of like a, the same, you saw, did you see the, the boats that they used to pull, pull the docks around at, at the informer video? Yeah. It, look, it looks like a, like a, kind of like a, a mi workboat. mini workboat, yeah? Don't move fast. Well, I'll tell you what, the ones that, that these guys were running over there, they, they had some 300 Suzuki's on them. Uh, and they got the job done. Yeah. Surprised they didn't got Porter Johns out here. You know, I just thought about that. 
cup smashed up. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think I think we can sacrifice it. But. You you know what though? I'll tell you right now. I I might. I think there might be value in going back to Fort Small because the weather is not as bad. Still gonna be straight in our face up there. I think we're in a better location right here. Oh no, I mean this is hey, absolutely I'm great. There goes another shots of that tugboat on the other tugboat. side moving. It just came under the bridge over there. Can you see it? You got it? That's it. This guy right here? Yep, that's it. Here comes your shot kill. We got a shot kill happening guys, but it's fine. These guys are working. They're working. They're working. We we wanna Are you guys with the shit, the chit show? <laughs> Every now and then I have to see who's asking, just in case. <laughs> Were you in Miami the last six months? <laughs> I was, and you filmed me and my wife. Ah! No. Boop. All right, so let, let's get a little tighter. We did see a barge when we pulled up. There was a barge moving some of the trestle, yeah. Yeah, yeah and, um, and <coughs> Andy, wasn't this the crane that we were talking about over here? Yeah, right over, right over there, the red tip. <laughs> yes. It comes down, that, that is the Chesapeake 1000. That is the largest crane we have lifting capacity wise available for this project on the east coast of the United States right now and it's a Don John owned asset okay and that crane has an interesting history in that uh, when Howard Hughes was involved with the CIA operation to recover a Russian sub that's how that crane was built that's what it was actually built for to aid aid with that process so, so that it, that crane was involved in that in the when the global explorer oil rig that Howard Hughes was a part of. Wow. Um, that That's where that's the history. That's how that, that crane came into being. All right, guys. Well, let's go ahead and get more information, more uh, some shots. I think we got this uh, 600 meter, uh, millimeter lens that we can probably get some some tight shots over here. Compensating for something like that? Uh, just a little. Just a little. Wait for it. So Sony made that specifically for the Menorcan mullet. Oh, well, listen. Um, I'm just honored to be out here to, to, to witness this and, and, and let my audience see some of this hard work that's going to happen. I mean, it's Sunday. Right now, there's, there's people at church right now. These, these people are not stopping work. This is going to be a 24-7 operation. And I'll tell you, that crane is, is working. Yep. It's absolutely working. Now we, we probably did miss a little bit of the barge uh, that we saw one of those tugboats earlier. Brought a truss out. Yeah. It, it brought a, it was a nice chunk, but it's so it's it's gonna be a piece out of a ton. Yeah. How is it that you say, Andy? It's like eating a, an elephant. It's like eating an elephant, one one bite at a time. One bite at a time. I've worked really hard to eat that elephant. I'm I'm getting I'm starting I've to look like it. I've got a lot of bites under my belt. <laughs> I'm In starting fact, to, my belt's gotten bigger. <laughs> I'm starting to look like that elephant. Well, you know what's crazy? Look, there's there's the tug right there um, pulling up. What's crazy about all this footage is that we saw a lot of these assets come in yesterday while we were doing the live. I'm betting you that that barge that we saw leaving with that truss was one of the barges we saw come in yesterday. Was it the really, really big one? I, it didn't look like the really big one. Yes, and there's a very, very big barge. Is that, is that, is that a barge over there? Is that is that a barge over there? No. 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 Fort McHenry. Yeah. Okay. I was looking at something else, guys. That's where the national anthem was written, wasn't it? Well, that's the fort. But he was actually over there. Watching the bombardment of Fort McHenry. The the Star Spangled Banner? Yep. That's it right there. Right here? Keep going, keep going, keep that's it right there. The bombardment of that fort. 
is where Francis Scott Key, who the bridge was named after, yes, he wrote the Star Spangled Banner based off of the bombardment of that fort by the British. And as Americans, we sing it and put our hand on our hearts mm -hmm. whenever we hear it. Correct. And that's, that's pretty awesome information for them to see. It that. actually gave me chills just even telling you that that's what we're looking at right there. It's, it's, it's pretty deep when you really think about it. Uh, Derek, like... There's, it, um, there's a very good narrative explaining the lyrics of it mm -hmm. and like what he was actually observing and why he's writing that. Mm -hmm. Because the group that was holding up the flag is a like picture you, you know the statue of Iwo Jima right the, mm. the flag raising with yes. the Marines holding, yes. raising the flag over yes. Iwo Jima that's that's a lot like what Francis Scott Key was observing as that fort was getting bombarded people are getting killed and mangled they made sure that the flag stayed up so the pole was actually head in, held in place by a lot of deceased patriots that were just hugging the pole keeping the flag up because I forget which British general it was was basically telling them I will cease fire when that flag comes down and they wanted to make sure that that flag stayed flying I'm gonna end the video right there I'm not even gonna say anything else guys hey I want to thank you guys for watching this uh, video my name is Alfred Montaner. Follow me, follow Andy Jones from the Menorcan Mullet and Derek from the Food Boat. Uh, appreciate you guys. Alfred Montaner making a scene. As always, I'm out of here.